You see, now that's why I love this man. Pause, 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 pause. If you didn't already know, the thing is, without a doubt, one of my favorite movies of all time. Showcasing an intense and claustrophobic atmosphere, an interesting and compelling story, and powerful, thought-provoking themes, The Thing is undoubtedly a marvel in science fiction. But today, I'm not focusing on its technical brilliance. <laughs> no. Today, I'm going to tell you about how The Thing could have won. I know, that's not what you were expecting, right? Most people expect an analysis of the film's horror elements or special effects, but that's not what I'm going for today. Although I'm sure this video probably was what you were expecting because the title of the video probably gave it away. But anyway, I just thought it was interesting that nobody else I've heard of has tackled this topic before, so I decided to do it myself. At first, it seemed so trivial, so dumb and unimportant, but after thinking about it for a few moments, I realized something. The Thing probably could have, and maybe even should, have won. He should have been able to beat Kurt Russell's quick-witted McCready and everyone else. Hell, maybe it did. Because maybe, just maybe, Childs was transformed in the end. But, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to act like Childs was still human because if he weren't, then the thing did win. And there's no point in me making this video. But if he is still human, it begs the question, how could the thing have won? Now, I'm going to say right off the bat that this isn't a single plan from start to finish of what the thing should have done to win because a sequential plan like that would have so many new variables the film never introduced and would create a butterfly effect moving further and further away from the original story, making it very difficult to judge what would have actually happened. So, this is more a series of suggestions and observations that I think would give the thing a far better chance of success. First, it's important to realize that the thing begins the movie with a distinct advantage over the main characters. Ignorance. You stupid. No, I'm not. What's 9 plus 10? 21. You stupid. When the dog first arrives at the camp with two foreigners shooting at it, the crewmen had no idea what to make of the situation. They were scrambling and unprepared, completely unaware that the dog they would soon take in was actually an alien from outer space. The thing's main goal, at this point, should have been to stay undiscovered as long as possible quietly and deliberately assimilating one crew member at a time without alerting any others, keeping suspicions low and ignorance high, hopefully, until there were no more people around. As a safeguard, it could have fragmented itself after every assimilation, just in case one entity were captured or killed, or in the event it were discovered, making it far more challenging to exterminate every piece of it. Now, I realize this plan may have been difficult to accomplish considering the thing had already been fractured into at least two separate entities by the time the film picks up and the characters start understanding what's happening. Besides, the thing already tried this plan to a lesser extent, but was unable to assimilate Bennings without being noticed by Windows. Let me explain. At this point in the film, when the dog had already arrived and the burnt remains of the thing had been brought back to the camp, the thing had two bodies, each of which presumably ended up attacking and assimilating a member of the crew. Many people believe the crew members who were attacked were Bennings, who we clearly see being assimilated, and Palmer, who later reveals himself as a thing during the blood test. Even if the thing could have assimilated Bennings unseen, it still would have needed to get the rest of the crew, which may have been challenging because of what happened to the dogs in the kennel, which put everyone, especially Blair, on edge about the entire situation. Perhaps, if the thing hadn't targeted the dogs initially, who were unnecessary to assimilate anyway because they had no way to defeat the thing, but instead waited to attack the humans with its advantage of their ignorance of what it truly was, then maybe it could have successfully assimilated each crew member who would have been much less likely to suspect the dog of being an alien since the crew members only knew about the dog's true nature after the kennel incident, which also allowed Blair and the others to find out some of the secrets of the thing, such as its assimilation ability and enabling them to devise plans to stall or even kill the thing, effectively removing the thing's ignorance advantage. But, before I go on, I think it's also important to say that while the thing certainly had its advantages, it also had a few disadvantages. Now, I should say that all of my evidence comes solely from the 1982 version of the thing directed by John Carpenter, and most of the theories I bring forth are of my own creation, so I might be wrong. It's certainly not out of the question. But, the thing, in its journey of assimilation, would have had to circumvent the drawback that it cannot control any fragmented pieces of itself, meaning these fragmented pieces have their own self-interest and will do whatever it takes to stay alive. 
This is important because after the incident with Norris and Dr. Cooper, McCready realizes the drawback of the thing's separation ability and concocts a brilliant plan to exploit it, which purposefully and in a controlled manner separates the thing into two disconnected entities so he can threaten one of these entities and in the process reveal who was truly the thing. We're gonna draw a little bit of everybody's blood. We're gonna find out who's the thing. Watching Norris in there gave me the idea that maybe every part of him was a whole. Every little piece was an individual animal with a built-in desire to protect its own life. You see, when a man bleeds, it's just tissue. The blood from one of you things won't obey when it's attacked. It'll try and survive. Crawl away from a hot needle, say. He does this through the blood test, observing the effect of heat on blood for each of the remaining crew members, making for one of the tensest moments in the film. So we, trying to figure out a way for the thing to succeed, have to either find a way to pass this test or to avoid it altogether. I think the thing should simply avoid the test to keep things as simple as possible because trying to pass the test would probably involve a lot of speculation. Although simply avoiding the test might be easier said than done, not every part of the thing has to avoid the test. We'll treat failing the test as an automatic death sentence for whichever part fails to, again, keep things simple, so it'll just get burned if it fails. So one piece of the thing is just going to have to take one for the team, like it or not. And since only one part needs to avoid the test, all the thing has to do is hide at least one part of itself away from where the test is taking place. Blair was this part in the film. He was building some sort of aircraft while the others were performing the blood test, even though at the time, we didn't know he had already been assimilated at some earlier point in the film. The Thing also could have capitalized on its physical advantages and survival ability, as it can survive at freezing temperatures, heal rapidly, and even separate its body into parts when necessary. It also appears that the only way to permanently put down the Thing is with fire or an explosion of some kind. However, the Thing ultimately never really makes use of these abilities. It could have tried to shut down the facility much earlier in the film, freezing everything and everyone, rather than waiting until the end when everyone was already aware of its plans and abilities since it was the only organism that could survive at such cold temperatures. By that point, they were already prepared to take it down. Got back inside and blew the generator. Six hours, it'll be a hundred below in here. Well, that's suicide! Not for that thing. It wants to freeze now. It's got no way out of here. It just wants to go to sleep in the cold until the rescue team finds it. It also could have sabotaged the flamethrowers as well as the blood, so the crew would have had a much more difficult time putting it down. Without flamethrowers, the thing may have been able to simply charge at people or it could have been less reliant on being sly and unsuspected. The thing may have even been able to infect people with only a small piece of itself if it had contaminated the food or water. It would have been only able to accomplish this if the suspicions were still low, which would have been nearly impossible after the incident in the kennel which caused Fuchs to suggest that everyone only eat from cans or meals they had prepared themselves. If a small particle of this thing is enough to take over an entire organism, then everyone should prepare their own meals. And I suggest we only eat out of cans. Okay. But the thing, despite its many mistakes, did strategize well throughout the entire film, creating discord and chaos among the group by poking holes in people's clothing and orchestrating conflict that only worked for its advantage. While Kurt Russell's lusciously bearded McCready saw through and overcame many of the thing's tricks, the thing was very successful, having a direct or indirect hand in every death in the film from Fuchs to Gary to Palmer to Windows and everyone in between. Whether you think the film's ambiguous ending points towards the thing's victory or defeat, it's clear that through the film's great sense of claustrophobia, amazing special effects and camera work, and the unpredictable intense plot, the thing truly is a masterpiece.